and you are live good evening and welcome this is exploring wordpress with myself alan hennessy and mr trevor lawkins the digital alchemist how you doing alan i'm great let's do this first roll credits You gotta roll your credits. You have to roll the credits at the start of it. Anyway, definitely, definitely. How are you? How are you getting on? Oh, busy day, busy day. But good to be here to catch up with some exploring WordPress. Exploring the world of WordPress. Yes, indeed. In our little boxes, in our little worlds. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, indeed, guys. Welcome along to the show. This is Exploring WordPress, episode six. Trevor, oh my god. Six. You can't believe it, can't believe how quickly it flies in. But um, tonight we are going to be talking all about um, the uh, page builder plugin and tool or whatever you want to call it. It's, it depends on where you are or what, you, uh, which, what way you want to uh, frame yeah. it yourself. It's up to you. But uh, yeah, tonight we're going to be talking all about it. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been sort of talking about, you know, the back end and stuff like that and how to... Um, I suppose, you know, just domains and your your hosting and stuff like that and the platform and how it works. But tonight we're going to sort of go into a little bit more detail and start creating web pages and uh, mm. all that fantastic stuff and how we can get into it. So, uh, Trevor, how have you been? How has your week been? Well, we had a bank holiday yesterday, which was, uh, which was pretty Yay. good. So I I was working all day because when you work for yourself, you <laughs> every day is a work day, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, quite quite busy at the moment. So uh, it's uh, all good. Mustn't complain. Good stuff, good stuff. And tonight we are going to be talking, as I said, all about uh, the page builder. And I found this a huge asset when it comes mm -hmm. to – like I know there's a load of tools out there. There's a load of sort of, I suppose, page builders as such and stuff like that for um, WordPress. Um, but mm – -hmm. This particular one that we're going to talk about is probably one of my favorites because I think it's quite simple and it's quite easy to understand and it's uh, it does everything you need it to do, really, you know. And I think that's uh, just that's just on a personal point of view. So uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things without a page builder, WordPress is a bit of a struggle to really get to grips with when in, in terms mm -hmm. of designing. Like you say, the, the previous weeks we've, we've gone into the, the basics of how to get WordPress started so you can actually use it and make use of it. Um, and the page builder is one of those key things that takes it from like a basic, like what we call a word processor. You know, you open like Microsoft Word or something, you've got a blank page where you can just type in and add some pictures. And that's what WordPress started off because it was a blogging platform it started off with all you want to do type some words put a picture in now and again and that was sort of the basics mm. so without a page builder you've got this very bland empty sort of box to type some text in if you're a whiz and know how to, how to do that and you can get around all that and you know loads of code and it's great we don't you know most people can't cope with all that and they don't want to do that if, um because they want to do that they wouldn't be using wordpress in the first place so the page builder is a layer on top of that, which makes it easy to bring in tools. So you could bring in like, say, a title bar, you can bring in an image, you can bring in a video, features, testimonials, different objects that build up a web page. And they're all little modules that you bring in to build and create what you're trying to make your page to look like. And different page builders have different functionality, some are sort of very visual drag and drop. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Others um, are more kind of you see what you do on the screen with what we call a box model, which we can touch on the box model in a bit when we look at that. Mm. Um, and it's I guess it depends what you're comfortable with. I'm I'm more of a box model person because that's how I've spent the last twenty years building websites. If you're more of a visual kind, of, I just want to drag and drop that there and drop this here and put this there, and you just want to do that. That's another way of using it. They have their pros and cons. Um, all I would say is some of the page builders out there, one, they'll cost you a lot of money, and two, they are so complicated. Yeah. They kind of – it's kind of an oxymoron. They're there to try and make your life easy, but they have so many features, people get in such a pickle with them trying to get it to look how they want it to look because it's like, well, what do I want this, um, this box model to look like? How many features do I want? Well, there's 50 features you can configure to make it look right. And unless you know what those 50 features all do, you're going to spend their hours trying to wander around this thing. You know, do you know the difference between padding and margins? If you don't, you know, well, which box do I fill in? And I have, I've used 
some that you know when i worked on clients websites and they say oh can you update this update that and you, you go in and you find a page builder that's not one i've come across or something a bit different i did one a couple of weeks ago and i'm scratching my head thinking how do i just change this how do i just yeah. move this box here and i, I had an e-commerce site and the, there was a button at the top that said store and we wanted to change it to shop because stores with an american-ish kind of terminology for a shopping cart shopping system so we wanted just wanted the word shop it should be relatively easy, shouldn't it? To change store to shop. Uh, I, I, was, I was wandering around this this page building theme system for days, trying to throw on days. You know, it spent a long time trying just to find where that change was in the system. So they may look great on the face of it, but you can, you know, get involved in page builders that get all too complicated for you. And you get in such a muddle with it all when you really just want something simple. And the one we're going to talk about tonight, Site Origin, it's. On the face of it, it looks fairly basic, but he has some pretty good features that copes with most things. If you'd go into child themes another day, we can look at how you can customize things on any any theme you've got going. And I think it's a great tool. There's a free version, there's a paid version. The paid version, you get more features, uh, more options, um, but the free version does does a lot. You know, uh, it really does get you get you a long way down the road to building pages with lots lots of options. So, um, yeah, without a page builder, I think you'll struggle. So uh, that's one of the things you want to look at and it's across getting a bit technical it's across between a theme and a plugin it's kind of associated with a theme but it's plugins that make it work and it's sort of this odd sort of bit a bit of both but yeah. um don't don't get too stressed about it you know the installation of most of these things it takes care of it for you certainly sites i build people it all comes ready packaged so you've got all the bits you need to go with so it's um it's there ready to go yeah and i think that's that's key important because a lot of people will get sort of oh what do you do with this and uh, it's i think i think it's just you know calm down just install this thing and then you can just play with it and like what i done was is, and, and i have to admit when i first got it i one of the first things i done was is i just created a, a blank page basically and i literally just went okay right let's load piece by piece here on and mm. see what it does and understand how it actually works i'm sure you're going to explain that i'm sure you're probably going to <laughs> talk a little bit more about that but uh, you know what I mean? but i found that and like that as you say if you work in this in this world of boxes and you know rectangle boxes and everything fits into it or if it's as you say if it's just you know you're a visual person you like to put it on you know i think especially with the visual end of it i think that has a few drawbacks Hmm. because you know you don't know how it's going to sit on you know one whether it's going to be on you know desktop or on mobile so i think it's so it's important that you know i i personally like to frame things because i think it just keeps it it, it makes it compact and you can see where it is and you can see what you're it's doing. yeah i think the consistency is the key to it if you're building page hmm. of you know you've got a home page and about page services page going on and on you want a common theme with style across the whole lot of them. You know, if you're going to have, say, a, um, I don't know, a big banner picture with some title text, you want that text to be the same on every page in terms yeah. of its position, its color, its font. It, if you drag and drop it, oh, I'll just drop that there, that will do. Then you go to another page and you go, well, I'm just going to drop that there. How are you going to know you've dropped it in the same place as you dropped the first one, you know? Mm. And it's very easy to make it look very messy um by not quite getting everything lined up across all the pages you're going to do so you, it starts to lead into inconsistencies and that's it can be subtle things but it just makes the site look untidy mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's it's pros and cons and uh, twins what you get comfortable with but um mm. yeah so shall we crack on and i should share a screen and we can have a little bit more a uh, little bit of a look into this in a little bit more yeah. detail so uh <laughs> Okay, so let me just do the little uh, necessary things here to be done. Yes, so uh, yes, I think we're we're all good to go there. But, <laughs> yes, uh, I'm just going to get rid of the uh, compass media sign. Hide that. <laughs> that's uh, that's a bit of over over things. So, yeah, um, we'll get rid of the actual banner because that may be uh, annoying people. <laughs> we're there. So, now we're a bit better. Now, okay. Now, look at that. Yeah. So just to just to go back to we, we installed some themes a week or so back um we're running a thing called vantage here mm. which is offered by the same company site origin that do the, the page builder and because it's by the same company they kind of marry together quite well um which i use that on here i've actually got advantage child theme which uh we will probably explain in another another podcast 
video um what that is. video and video, like video thingy, whatever. whatever whatever we're doing it is, it is so <laughs> that much is it. <laughs> yeah so that's it that's the theme and then if we look at um uh these plugins we can see um we have here various plugins which will come together install we've got a page builder by site origin we've got site origin css site origin premium i've gone for the premium version uh, i've got widgets bundle and they're all part and parcel of this page builder mm. so that's all installed ready to go so if we go up to a page and let's start creating a page We've got a few we can play about with here um I mean, this is a pretty empty site at the moment so let's go into the about page and this is what you're going to get uh because we've configured it to revert to the, have the page builder system um i will take that out i'll delete that so we start fresh so you've got a blank page basically and um we need to add something in here and basically we start off by adding a row and we can choose a row. Uh, I think what we'll do to start with, we'll put a title, a heading, a heading title on the top of this mm -hmm. page to get started. We can start a row here. This defaults to two columns. Um, you can change the column widths, or you can have some sort of predefined, I don't know, halves. That's half of that. Um, or you can have three rows, or you, however you want to do it. We'll go for one row. Sorry, one, yeah, one column on the row. And we just insert. So this is now created. A single row. This isn't what it would look like on the website. This is just the builder system, which is a grid. So basically, we've got a row. We now need to put something into that row. I'm actually going to put screen on this so people can see this a bit better. Better. Yeah. Um, and this is where our widgets come into adding in these different tools. Some people call them tools, widgets. Call it what you what you like. Each theme will be called it something slightly different. But here we've got a range of widgets, and the whole choice. Uh, we won't go through every single one of them, but we'll go in here to let's say Vantage Headline, and this is quite a, a basic tool. We click on that, and that's put that Vantage Headline into that row. Mm. And here you can see we can edit, and this is a really basic tool, nice and simple. We've got a headline, so we can put about. Okay. So we've got headline and subheadline, and we've got various things we can configure here. Uh, margins and bits and pieces if you want to really fine tune it but we'll leave that alone at the moment and we'll do done if we update that page and then we uh, view the page this website is fairly say fairly basic but this is this is the row it's put in with about and all about wordpress that's the title and that's the subtitle mm. i'm just going to go back to edit page and what i'm going to do is take off we're going to go for full width page because we don't particularly want that column on the right. Let's go back to view page again. So I've just taken this column off the right, so we've got a single width. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the 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 heading title and the menu is all configured in a separate area. We're talking about sort of the page content, which sort of starts here and down below. And that's a really basic headline, subheadline. You can configure things like changing colors and fonts separately in the, how you customize it. Um, we're going to look at a second one, which is a little bit more complicated. So we'll delete that, and it's deleted the widget, not the row. We'll add a different widget this time. And here we have a site origin headline. And that pops out in there. And again, we can go into edit. And now you'll see if we scroll down, a lot more choice. So we can put in our headline about, we can even add a link um, if we wanted to link that to something within the website or externally, we can put a link in there, www.website address, choose to open a new window. And now here we get a bit more technical. We can choose the H number, the H tag of that title, because every page um, should have a page title, which is your H1, and then you have subtitles and headings going through the document. So H1 should really be your first one on the page. We've got a color picker and uh, you know standard fairly standard color picker if you know your hex code you can type a code in there let's pick blue of some description we've got a hover color so if you've got a link you know if you hover over a link you can change the color we'll leave it alone we can pick a font or if we've configured 
the font in the customization, which we'll cover another another time, you can just leave it alone and that'll leave, that'll pick the, the font you've said I want my H1 tags to be, whichever font it is, or you can override it. And again, font size you can change. We can do alignment. So I think we're gonna left align this one. And you can have top, bottom margins, heights. We'll leave that alone. We've got a subheadline. Um About WordPress and again the same sort of configuration here we'll make this H2 to keep it flowing from H1 to H2 um, let's have that in purple you like my design skills here yeah <laughs> just saying, yeah great choice of colors yeah great choice of colors but just on that, just on just on, yeah. on that H1 and H2 I think that's very important that people understand that you need to be putting them in because they are very important yeah. as a part of Searching and, and a part of the structure of the website and faults yeah. that it'll show up. But look, as I said, that's that's for a yeah. whole another day. Yeah. But it's just a little, uh, I suppose, little ninja trick that makes yeah, sure that's right. that you're yeah. using that um, H1 and H2 reference. Probably, yeah. Um, divider, we can configure a divider, which is just a line. We can have a solid, dash, dotted, grooved, whatever. We'll have solid. What colour should we have? Bright red? Let's pick bright ah, yeah. red. Bright red. We might as well. We're all uh, we're on psychedelics. So let's go. <laughs> you can change the thickness of the line. You can centre align it because 80%, we want a whole, we'll have 100% line so it goes the whole width. If it's whole width, it really doesn't matter too much, but left will do. I mean, again, we can change margins if we want to. And then here we can say, well, actually, I want headline, divide a subheadline, or you want subheadline in there, etc. We'll go into these other widget configurations another day, I think okay that we'll update that and then we'll preview that and there we go we've got our title a subtitle and a line mm. and you know that's not the best design skills i've come up with for a long time but you can see you know they're fairly oh, standard yeah, you can see if, if in your in, if in your customization of the theme you've said well my h1 tag is going to be my brand font in my brand color it will pick up that from the customization, the sub is your H2. So once, once you go in with your branding and say, well, my, my fonts are this, my colors are this, you can configure that in the back end of the system. So when you put that headline in, you pick H1, you pick H2, it will be the right font, it will be the right color. But you do have the choice to override it if you really wanted to. But, you know, it's best just to leave it alone and configure it once in the back end. But that's that's how you add one module in. Mm. All page builders will have a very similar concept. They'll all have titles, images slide carousels all these kind of features you see on websites and that's that's adding one module in so should we add another one in and make it a bit more complicated yeah and let's uh let's uh add another one in i'm gonna go full screen here again so yeah so we can um add another widget into the same row um or we can start a new row and um, decide well let's let's start a new row and what we can do because we're happy with this row, it's one row and everything, we can duplicate the row and it creates a second one. And just for housekeeping, I'm going to change the color just so I know which one I'm working on. It doesn't affect the website at all. It's just to make, if you've got lots of rows, it's easier to see which which one you're working on. Yeah, exactly. I'll take the headline out and what we're going to do is we'll add, let's add an image. Uh, and the image, there we go, add an image. So that's added that in there, and then we edit that. I'm that very quickly. I always have to go <laughs> through, and, and I'm searching. So where is the plugin? Up, image? Down, up down. There I go. Oh, there it is. There. <laughs> there it is. Um, choose media. I, I, luckily, I've already got an image picked here already. But you've got upload files if you wanted to upload from your computer, you drag files or select files in there. But I've already got one here, which I've ticked. It shows me a preview. It tells me what size the banner is. That picture, two thousand pixels for six hundred. Now I'm going for a full width banner here. And I generally go for 2,000 pixels wide to cover most widest screens. If you've got a really, really silly wide screen like you've got, you're probably not wide enough. But you also have to consider mobile design it has to fit the same. So it's a bit of a kind of gamble which size you can go for. But I think 2,000 is a good round number to go with. I've already put in an alt tag, a title, and a caption, which we can talk about another day. But that's in there. And I just basically set media. So that's chose the media. Um, I've got alignments. I can choose title, texts, alt texts. I can put in there. Um, and we can put a link if we want to link that picture somewhere, if you want to open a new window. And uh, if I hadn't got full width, I can put pop that in there. So let's just do done, and we'll come back 
and update that. And then go back to the website and you can see that image has been put in there. Mm. Now, I wanted a full width picture and it's niggling me that's not quite full width. It's kind of, you can see lined up, if you look at the edge, the edge here of the page, yeah. But it hasn't gone full, full width right across the page. And that's because the settings on the row, if we go into this little toolbar, we can edit the row or we can edit the widget. If we edit the row, we've got a layout option here. And in part of the layout, we've got row layout standard. Well, our standard currently is full width, so they're effectively the same. But I can make it stretched. Mm. So if I go stretched and done and update and then go back, that's now made it completely the full width of the page. Mm. Yeah. Um, and generally what you probably want to do is quick handy thing. You can drag these up and down. So I now put the picture there and the text there. If I update that, go back. We've now got the banner there and the title underneath. So that's how easy it is to sort of move things around if you wanted to do that. So that's adding a couple of, a couple of widgets into that into those rows so like that and and when we talk about that then we talk also about um so okay so we've we started added in a uh, an image a banner image we've added in a a what's called a, a headline so i suppose yeah. adding a piece of text and adding a graphic beside it is fairly Handy yeah. enough to do as well. So let's maybe just well, let's add a bit of text. Yeah, let's yeah. let's add some text. Yeah. So let's go back to text and thing here. So I could add a new row, or I could copy a row. I think because the headline is is the right width I want, and it's not when you stretch things. All I want to do is duplicate that row. So we've got a second row. I'm going to take out the headline and recolor that. Now here, I actually want to add some text. Um, and I'm a big fan of having two two columns of text if you're writing sort of wordy kind of text. So what I'm going to do is edit the row, and I'm going to make it two columns even, 50-50. I can just type in numbers there if I want to change the numbers manually, but that's a 50-50, two columns. So I've got one, one column, two column. Um, if I go to widget, I know I've got down here editor. Um, if you can't remember, you can just type in. If you know what you're looking for, you can type in editor, and it just filters it. Mm. So if you can't find your image, you just type in image and it gives you some image options. So it has got a quick search. So editor. We've got an editor there, and I can type in there. Uh, well, I'm just going to get something on this screen, if you bear with me a second. Um, oh, I love it when I put them on the spot. I love it when I uh, put them on the spot. It's all right, I put put you on the spot. I love it. Either way, I I disguise it as you go and find it, and there you go. Okay, so Trevor, uh, let me just cut to that and say, Trevor, could you add some text? <laughs> oh, look, you have <laughs> yeah, Latin. So that's just added text, and you've got a fairly standard toolbar. Um, there is a plugin you can add. Again, another plugin you can add to have extra features on your toolbar. I haven't installed it on this one yet, but um, you know there, there are other. Uh, widgets you can put onto that but that's your basic text um you can change tools there so we'll leave that there and then the very clever thing i can do is i can duplicate that it gives me two of those and i can drag that over there how easy is that so if i now update that and go back to the website i've now got two columns of text yeah and and what i'm going to do just and, just and so you can see the difference um, I really do need the, the other toolbar in there because it's very difficult to change colours and stuff on here. I'm going to make one, one bold and one not bold. Let's update that. And I'll go back so you can just see the two different ones. So I don't even see that's bold and that isn't. Now, the, the thing about this is when you're on a widescreen, which we're looking at here, it's easier to read because you're not scanning, you know, so far across to read it. It's easy to read two columns on a big screen. If I go into responsive mode and change the width of that screen, as I go, say, to a tablet, it's now pinged into one column, and that's sort of a, a sort of a tablet sort of size, and it's put the bold underneath. Yeah. It's what we about responsive design. So if I go down sort of to, um, say, I don't know, mobile phone kind of size, 
it's now shrunk that down and put the one column, the bold column underneath underneath there. So that's the beauty of responsive design. You can see it changes from there to there, a roundabout sort of tablet portrait width. But it make, it means when you're on a widescreen like that, it's a lot easier to read two columns and one column. Same yeah. for why newspapers, newspapers and magazines do it because it's just easier to read. Yeah. So that's why we did, did the two columns there. But that's how easy it is to, to put two columns in, put some text in, so with the right plug-in. So even if you're taking out, say, the right-hand column, the, the right-hand box, and you wanted to add an image in there, you could very easily just whack an delete. image in there. Yeah, I could delete that. If I wanted to, say, put this image in, I could duplicate that. I could drag that down there. I know this, this you know, it's probably not sized right for what you want to do, but that's how easy it is to change, do that. I can update that, refresh the page, and now it's put a picture there and the text there. Yeah. And if I go down to responsive, it just puts the picture down the bottom, mm. jumps it over there. So it's very easy. You can see in, the, in this what we call this box model. And if I um, go into some settings, you better see the uh, – I'm just going to go into theme editor for a second. And I'm just going to take that out there. This is a child theme. Don't panic. <laughs> um I've done that nope. oh, sorry got to do let's get the right thing if, if there we go so i've just turned on a box model a little bit of code so it's putting a red dotted line around every box mm. so if you look down here you can you can see the rows you've got the row for the picture this red line where the pictures that's one row and the pictures inside it um we got the about all about WordPress title, that's another box. There are other boxes which are page boxes which you can't configure. It's part of the template. We've got a box for the text. You've got a box for the image. And that's sort of just highlighting where all the boxes are to kind of get the visual of how your website's being put together. Mm. Um, so that's quite a handy little, handy little trick of the trade. Even down here, we've got the menu bar at the top there. That's in a box. This is a page title for WordPress, which we can get rid of. We don't need it. That's another box. So it's all it's all rectangles, basically, putting it all together. And you can see once we go to responsive, the rectangles get to a point where they flip. And then just got the rectangles going down. So uh, that's what we need about mean about box model. <laughs> this has got a live editor. So I'll turn that to... Turn that off so we don't get that. <laughs> take it off so it's a bit easier to see what's going on um this has got a live editor and um you can see these tools here and you basically can click on an element within the page so i want to edit that image and it brings up the same tool so you're using you're using the same tool but if you're not if you can't follow these boxes i mean that's just quite a simple page it's got four widgets on it but if you've got more complex page um you can scroll up and down your page and think, oh, this is what i want to edit this picture here click on it and you can edit the picture um, however you want to there, different options on there. You can pick a different image, change options. So that, that's what the live editor, page editor does. It's not it's not a sort of drag and drop here, but it's a drag and drop within the boxes. So if I want to move that picture to go there. Oh, it's got stuck. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, it's doing it. It's doing it. It's gone slow for a sec. Watch me get out of this. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll try to work away on that in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do think... Uh, around, like, around, around. Yeah, like I do think that at the end of the day, like that's that's fairly it's fairly understandable. And you know, obviously, you can add more things in, and there is widget bundles that you can actually get for that, and the changes all around. So, I, I like the idea of of having, and I think more so than anything, I think it's the control that you have that mm. you can sort of see, or you can you know you can go in and you can play with it and say no, I don't like that and whatever, mm. but. My big thing would be is is not to stray too far from the way it is set up because when you start changing font colors and I've done it a number of times, oh, I just going to change and I've played around with it on a on a particular, mm -hmm. one particular site and I'm going oh, and then I couldn't figure out because you get so engrossed, I suppose, in the mm -hmm. sense of all of the different settings that yeah. you forget what you've done. So like usually like i have a particular way of the way i do it it's not this it's not very it's 
you know, everyone's different. Every designer and everyone who designs websites and stuff like that has their own tricks of the trade and stuff like that. But if you're just doing a basic website, you can see, as Trevor explained there, that, you know, you can add a header, you can add your your images, yeah. you can add your two columns or whatever it may be. And I think we can talk, we can talk about design of, of an actual website and a design look of a website and how it should be in another edition or whatever. But I think um, going from that, I think the, um, especially the site origin um, mm. uh, plugin and tool and page builder is, 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 you know, it's very, very good. It's very easy to use and it, doesn't cost you anything and that's probably yeah there's, there's the free only, edition yeah the free edition has plenty of plenty of choice you know yeah, it, the premium the one is premium one is good there's a few extra pieces on it it's not majorly mm. um expensive but you know if you are starting to get into building the website and you need feel like you need more have a look at the premium version and maybe then decide whether you want to buy it but i would suggest is is to get used to the free version first it's like everything you know use the yeah. free one or as long as you can until such time as it's you know you need to start i suppose moving up the ranks and type of thing but i think that's probably the key to um page builder as such you know well i think it's like anything i'd, I'd say to a lot of people when i'm talking you know, i said have you got a have you got a demo site to go with your live site. I was talking to somebody about e-commerce the other day. They were trying to look at some plug-in on e-commerce. They said, well, try it out on your demo site. I said, well, I haven't got a demo site. Yeah. And I said, well, we'll have a demo site. You know, you can have a subdomain on it. Your hosting package should provide you a subdomain and you can put another installation of WordPress on. shouldn't cost you any money. If it is, get a hosting company. Um, where you can play about with all these things. And if you can't play about with them, if you can't have that and you quickly want to play with something, like on this page builder, have a demo page, have a test page. Put in a put in a widget, put a headline widget. Well, that widget's not quite a want. I'll try a different widget. Try some features. Play about with it. Try layouts. Once you've played about with the demo page, even if your website's live, no one's going to see the page. So you can play with it. Try different tools out. Try the configurations. There's a lot more. I mean, we've just scratched the surface tonight. We haven't gone into all the settings. Mm -hmm. But let's like say once you start playing with all the settings, you think, oh, that's that looks better if I add a margin there, or increase the padding, or make the font a little bit bigger. You can try out these things on demo pages, play with them, and get them right. Um, but the trick is then use that across every page once you're happy with it and keep the same configuration. Yeah. This, this is where the power of things like child themes comes in or duplicating pages comes in. Like as you just saw there, where you're duplicating one text in block for another text block. If you've got the first text block right, you've got the font right, the color right, the line spacing right, and you're happy with it, it's a lot easier to duplicate it and change the text than creating another one and go, what font size did I have on that? Was it 12 point or 14? Yeah, exactly. you know? yeah. And it's the same with pages. You can, once you get a page, you know, you create the about us page. If you then duplicate that page, you can then make it into an FAQ page, at least to the layout of having the sort of a banner pitch across the top. You've got the size, right? The position, right? The rows stretched. Okay. And everything. It's far easier to duplicate things than start from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, I think any time I start a new website, I'll play about with a demo page, try different things out. It's complete gibberish, you know, like we put some Greek text in there, you know. It doesn't matter. Just play with it, try with it. But even before that, you know, if you've got brand colours and brand fonts, that's what you need to get right to start with. Before you get anywhere near, before you log into WordPress, decide what fonts you're using, you know. I see so many people that sort of get into the website and play about with it and they try different fonts on different pages going, oh, I quite like that font. Oh, that font's in, oh, I don't know, I'll leave it. And each page is a different font. They couldn't quite decide. If you haven't got your brand guide to start with, stop and create some sort of brand guide. Decide which fonts you want to use. Write them down. Have a file. Create a document somewhere in word or canva or something have a style guide you know what colors are you going to use what's the color codes even if you're scribbling on a piece of paper you know i do that i've got a file sat on my desk here i've got two color codes written on a piece of paper that's yeah. the codes for this brand you know yeah. um yeah. it's simple as that so whenever you're putting a color in you know what color you're going to use um that's why i would say before you start anywhere near a computer get a pen and paper and <laughs> get some ideas together um but you now certainly get the theme of your, your fonts your colors and then you can start actually seeing how it looks on screen and take yeah. it from there and I, yeah and and it's and you know and they're like 
you know, like I say, they're fairly basic things, but there are a lot of things that people forget about, and they don't do that because they go, oh, right, I have a website. Let's start creating, and they start creating page upon page, and then they go, oh, and they all just look so bad. So instead, you know, take the time, stop, stand back from it and say, okay, as Trevor says, what colors, what colors am I going to use? What font am I going to use? The other thing to take into consideration is, is think about someone who's going to view that website because you might think that's a super cool color like the purple that we put in. <laughs> but when someone's looking at that on a website, they might go, oh, I can't look at this and then they're going to walk away. So, you know, think about that as well. So there's a there's a there's a bit of, I suppose. I suppose I always call I would well, I suppose it's the psychology behind it is is like think about you don't see a lot of purple websites, you know, with big bold like all right, there's some of them, but you know, mm. as a as a as a rule of thumb, people usually go a white background to sort of see because the mm. text is usually going to be black or whatever it is, it's gonna be an yeah. open. And mm. I'm not saying that you're stuck to that. I'm not saying that at all, but what I am saying is, is give it a bit of thought before you start yeah. building out yeah. and then yeah. once you understand it. And I think the other big thing, that we, and we should maybe touch on it as well, is is doing is creating your site map before you even get onto your website because I hmm. think that's a very important part. And when I say the site map can be done on a Word document, like I will always, if I'm building a website, even for myself or for anyone else, yeah, I'll always sit down and say, okay, how are we going to structure this website? What is it? Where are the pages going to go? Is there yep. going to be 10 pages on the top? Is there going to be 10 tabs on the top? Or is there going to be five? Mm. Is the five going to have sub, sub, sub yeah, yeah. categories? Yeah. All of that. And I think doing that, you get a lot more clarity because I know oh, yeah. when I was building, when like, like I was building the Alan Hennessy, the, the personal one. Mm. I actually put on the whiteboard and said, okay, here's the way I'm going to set it out. This is one, and as I was doing each page, I worked strategically through it, saying, "Okay, yeah. right, I need the about page." Well, on the about page, I'm going to have a subdirectory of testimonials or whatever it may be. Yeah, services. I'm going to have social media. I'm going to have you know podcasts, all of them. And I was able to structure. And then, as I started to work with it, I started then to say, "Okay, that's done. That's done." Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm starting to see that there's a whole heap of pages done. Mm. I'm nearly at the end of it. I'm saying, well, that's great because sometimes you can get lost in, I, I don't know, I suppose you can get lost in the whole website and say, oh, I'll just do a little bit in this page and I'll do a little bit and that'll do. No, guys, don't. Yeah, no. it's, it's only <laughs> going to break your heart. It'll break your heart in the long run. Yeah. yeah. I've done it for years. Yeah. And I'm sure, Trevor, you've done it as well when you started yeah. it first, whereas if you have some sort of structure, you know, it's going back to if you start a business, you're going to have a business plan before you even open yeah, it. Yeah, up. yeah. you've got to plan it. I mean, you know, you see a lot of lot, lot of web builder tools are like, you know, get started today, click here, and you click and you're into a page designer. Just start yeah. designing, add a picture. Well, hang on a second. You know, you've got to step back. You know, you've got to get, if you've got a brand already, great. If you haven't at least come up with some colors and some fonts that fit something what mm. matches you're trying to do. You know, if you've had some business cards designed and you've got it pink and purple, then great, do pink and purple. Um, but equally, the structure is another big key area of design, you know, web design. The design is a key part of it. And the structure and the flow and how that's going to bring people through your site is a big part of that website. And whatever platform you're using, you still need to think about that structure. You know, like you say, the menu tabs, are oh, you going to have a few menu tabs and drop downs? How are you going to group them together? What order they're going to be in? How are you flowing through that site? And I always say it's a bit like a, a bit like a tree. You've got the big trunk is your home page, but then that sprouts off to branches and the branches sort of go to twigs and twigs go to, you know, and that's how it filters through. Yeah. Um, and once you start thinking, well, how is it going to sit together? Whether you do it on a spreadsheet, whiteboard on the wall or notepad at least you need some visual idea of how is this going to come together what makes sense to group what under what page you know main page the sub pages and then how that flows through because the whole point of someone land on a website is to funnel them through from where they land through to where you want them to do something whether that's phone me up send me an email or buy something you're trying to get them to go to where you want them to go and if you just chuck all your pages around in the website and go oh there's all the information and there's no flow to it people in the land and go, what do I do next? I mean, I recently did a site for somebody. They had five pages, fairly basic site. 
there was no flow. It all just came to the bottom of the page. It's like, oh, that's interesting. There's nowhere to go. It's just, oh, now where do I go? Back up the top? But it's, it's, it's dead. Every page was a dead end. Because all they'd done is thought, well, I want about, I want just dump all this stuff on. I'll put it on different pages. And it, and it just didn't work. So, we, you know, we we're now rebuilding it. So it actually has got some flow to it. And I had a call today with somebody just to go through what are the key pages? What are going to be the sub pages? How are we going to link them together? How is it going to move through? We've got a brand. We've got the colors. We've got the topography sorted out. We've got a logo. Then once that's all there, I'll then get to WordPress and start putting out some sort of page layouts so we start to see how the actual thing's going to look on screen. Yeah. But I haven't jumped into WordPress yet, you know. No. I mean, that's, that's, sort of the, like, that's sort of the last thing you do when before, yeah. you know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really is because that's, and, and uh, you know, in a sense, that's, and I know some people say, oh, it's not easy building a website. But that's actually the easiest pieces because you have <laughs> – once you have all the pieces of the jigsaw, it's just about putting yeah. the jigsaw together. And <laughs> I've seen it. I, I totally agree with you with regards to um, having a flow because, like, it's like a sales funnel. You know, like I teach when I'm teaching social that, you know, that everything should move to a website. Everything should push you towards a website where you can then make that conversion. And by making, by having a website and having then no flow, you're just you're just going back you, mm -hmm. you're going back on yourself and you're not going to get anyone that's going to do it. and I, you see it so many times so it's sound advices is to make sure you have some sort of you know some people call it a sales funnel i would probably call it a sales funnel if i was doing it so because yeah. it's where i go from a to b to c and plus as well then when you get into your analytics and you start looking at your analytics yeah. You yeah. can see where people are falling off on the website. So yeah. they're getting to a certain point and then they're just going, they're leaving. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it gives you an indication of why are they leaving? And then mm -hmm. you need to configure and you need to look at the, the reasons why they're leaving that page and yeah. it give you an indication. And it's, it's research, it's checking, it's, mm -hmm. you know, keep developing the website. And the other mm -hmm. Big yeah. thing, and I know we, we this is sort of getting off subject, but I do believe that you know a website is not just a one off thing, you mm. don't just put a website up and say the website's there and yeah. leave it for two years, three years, and say, Oh, it's there for people. The inform because the information changes just like your business does, yeah, your brand does, or whatever, whatever you're, whatever you're using the website, it changes on a weekly or a monthly basis. So mm -hmm. make sure you're doing them updates and stuff like that and changing stuff. I only done it with a new, or with a website I was working on at the weekend, noticed that that uh, two or three pages needed to be updated. Simple change in names of, particular things that the person was doing i went oh yeah. that's changed in the last month but it yeah. hasn't been updated so it's going in and doing that but anyway yeah. i think we're, we're veering off and we're on to another subject <laughs> and it's maybe yeah. something that we should look about we should look at talking about over the next couple of weeks as well but um in regards i suppose page builder uh page builder tools definitely well worth um We've given a recommendation here of Site Origin. We're not affiliated to anybody, mm. just so people are aware of that. Yeah. Look at that! Look at that sun coming so, in there. It's yeah, we, we don't we don't get a commission on selling a free product. So <laughs> no, exactly. Well, you know, but like at the end of the day, people might say, "Oh, we're not affiliated to," but yeah. we're not. Um, so just be aware. We're only here to help and try and hopefully mm. help you understand a little bit more about WordPress. And, uh, you know, hopefully that helps you along the way. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to reach out to either myself or to Trevor and uh, we'll help you as best we can. And we'll answer as many as, as well, we won't answer as many questions, <laughs> but we will guide you in the right direction in a sense. So uh, yeah. Yeah. that sun is just coming in there. Hold on. Hello. I know, you have to shut yeah. your blind. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, so oh, yeah. There you go. As the sun, as I was talking, I could see it getting more and more to be face. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, guys, as I said, hopefully this is a benefit to you. Uh, key points, Trevor, for uh, page builders, what would they be? What would you, what advice would you give? I would say try them out. I, well, I've said this before, you know, if you can get a demo site, set a demo site off of your live site, you know, um, install them. If they're free, install them, play with them. 
you know, try them out, see what you're comfortable with. If you like Site Origin, use it. If you don't, try something else. Um, but I certainly wouldn't rush out and spend a lot of money on a page build unless I actually tried the thing to see mm. whether it's useful or comfortable or I can get my head around it. Because um, I have seen some that will drain your bank balance quite a lot. And I look at it and think, that's a really professional t product. But you, you're going to need a lot of training and a lot of work to better work out how to use it to its fullest effect. You know, uh, I'm not saying the expensive ones are no good, but, um, you know, it's like if you buy, I don't know, a big performance sports car that's cost you 100,000 quid, unless you know how to drive properly, it's going to be wasted on you, isn't it? Mm. You know, you down the shops in your Ferrari, and then, you know, so there are some really good ones out there, but they can come up with some fairly high ticket prices. Um, and if you don't really know what you're doing and you're not sure and you're not up to the capability of using all those features, you're going to think, well, hang on, I've paid for all this stuff and I don't really know how to use it. Um, and we can show on, you know, on site origin or any other the free ones with things like a child theme and a bit, a little bit of knowledge, you can actually do a lot more. Um, and a lot of other plugins you can do more with it than perhaps some of the really expensive ones, but you know, it's, it's up to you, but I would certainly say try it out on a demo site somewhere first, play with it, get used to it. If you're happy with it, use it, you know, there's <laughs> nothing, mm. nothing wrong with it. Um, but it's just, uh, be open to trying different ones to see what you're comfortable with. But certainly without, without a page builder, I think you're going to struggle to get too far with WordPress. Yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, uh, that's about our love for tonight. Uh, way over time. Uh, usually we only book these for, sorry, we only do these for half hour tonight, 46 <laughs> minutes. Wow, a long time. But look, all good stuff. Hopefully yep. you've learned something uh, new and that's helped you along the way. And we would love your comments or suggestions or um, something, things that are maybe troubling you or you want to find out a little bit more about on WordPress, please let us know either by email. Uh, you can email me, alan at compassmedia.ie or you can pop a message in the comments or um, you can contact how Trevor, how? <laughs> yeah. the best uh, best place for me is go to the website digitalalchemist.live and on the contact page you'll find contact details and all the social channels that you can find me on so yeah contact me through that brilliant stuff so guys until next time um as i said if you need to get in contact with me uh compassmedia.ie is the website uh you find me there all as, as same as trevor social links are all there do connect with me and if you have been watching this video um on the replay please do let us know that you did watch it and if there is anything that as i said that you want to find out more about please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to us we'd be delighted to hear from you and uh, that's about our offer to we this week so next week we should be back with another episode of exploring wordpress so until next week at the same time as i always say be social trevor be creative hey <laughs> on next time bye 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 uh, oh, let's run the banner. Let's let's run in the outro, Trevor. I'm loving a little <laughs> outro. Until next week, bye.